Welcome to Beyond the Pages, a new and evolving program that brings you updates on stories you've enjoyed in the University of North Dakota Alumni Magazine. In the first two installments of this show, we interviewed three guests per show, and each show aired quarterly. Now we're trying something a bit different by focusing on one guest per show and moving to a monthly rather than quarterly format. I hope you enjoy this new Beyond the Pages. My guest today and Beyond the Pages is Dr. William Hoffman. He's a neurology resident at Brooks Army Medical Center, a captain in the Air Force, and a published author. Also, a 2015 University of North Dakota graduate. And you read his story in the summer 2020 issue of the UND Alumni Magazine. So happy to be catching up with him today on Beyond the Pages. Uh, Dr. Hoffman, uh, Billy, I know you go by Billy as well. How are you doing today? Wonderful, Milo. Thank you so much for, for having me. It is really a privilege. Well, I'm really interested in catching up with you because when we talked to you last summer, you were working on some research. You've done sort of a small survey of aviators. Your, your interest is in uh, medical issues with aviators, and, and you can tell us a little bit more about that. But, but that article has said, hey, if you're an aviator and you want to take part, um, there's a larger survey going on. And my understanding is that you're quite a ways along in that. You've finished that survey and you're, you're, being, um, you're moving forward with that. Tell, tell us about where your research is right now and the interest, uh, the, the focus of that, um, of that research. Yes, sir. Well, you know, first and foremost, pilots face a unique barrier uh, when seeking medical care because of what a new diagnosis or symptom can mean to their status as a pilot. And while that is common knowledge to aviators and, of course, the physicians that help care for them, interestingly, it's not really well characterized in the medical literature. And, um, you know, despite, you know, the aviation cohort growing and, um, you know, the complexities of technology that, um, that is not really well pinned down what this means and then what it means for broader implications in terms of the in terms of pilot healthcare seeking behavior as a whole. And so um, our group feels strongly that any meaningful change uh, to address this barrier that pilots face is going to come from quality, descriptive, epidemiological data, which is what we set out to do. And um, we are very grateful to UND and many other organizations like the FAA and United Airlines and Sun Country Airlines for supporting the research and we had just finished enrollment of, of just almost just about 4,500 pilots in our study. And um, we are super pleased and hopeful this will be a meaningful contribution to make progress in this problem. And, um, you know, it's under peer review. So we're hopeful it's going to be shared here in the near future. So your interest here and in, in what may, people should be interested in about this topic is you say it's kind of common knowledge that that aviators sometimes will hide, or maybe hide isn't the right word, but but not come forward, not reveal to their doctor if they've had an issue for fear that that might get them grounded. Is, is that the gist of, of, of the problem that you're investigating? Absolutely. So, you know, an organization like the FAA or in the Air Force, like a flight surgeon, they have certain standards that a pilot is, you know, supposed to meet in order to function as a required crew member. And the thought is that by meeting those standards, it can improve aviation safety. Now, while in theory that that works, you know, an un, our, our argument is that an unintended consequence of the structure of the system is it, it encourages um, lack of disclosure. And the primary way that we screen pilots to ensure their you know, health to, to function as a required aircrew member is basically disclosing. So we, you know, and I'm sure many of your, hopefully your listeners are well aware that when you see an AME, you know, it's a questionnaire. And if you answer yes to any one of those questions, it then triggers a further follow-up. But um, interestingly, while we've been screening pilots this way for about 100 years, um, this, there's never been a really rigorous study to validate that strategy. And um, all that is to say, you know, we are not trying to uh, put, you know, to scare or to, or to place blame on anyone. That is not the point at all. We are hopeful to characterize this problem and ultimately advocate for pilots. In, in aerospace medicine, we feel, at least our group feels strongly that we have a responsibility to pilots to address this barrier. And we feel that this sort of study is gonna be a, a meaningful first step. One of the things you told us in that 
uh, article that was in uh, last summer's issue was this thought that maybe the answer might be to set up some sort of system in which there could be some anonymous consultation with with doctors. Are you still is that still where you, you your advocacy lies, do you believe? Well, so there is not an easy answer to this problem. If there was an easy answer, it already would have been done. But our suspicion is that different cohorts within the aviator cohort as a whole will behave in different ways. And that likely targeted interventions to specific subgroups is going to be probably what a, what a solution might look like or a partial solution might look like. And, um, and in, in our study, one of our questions was, in, like you had mentioned, potentially uh, how likely a pilot might use an anonymous health advisory line modeled after what used to be called like the Lockheed Martin Flight Service line, where there can be some kind of consultation prior to you know, flight planning to assess pre-flight risk. Uh, and um, you know, overwhelmingly, the far majority of our responders said that that would be something that they would use. Um, and another part of our survey was, you know, our hypothesis was that if pilots are averse to seeking care, then they are probably seeking care elsewhere. Now, your listeners and common knowledge would say that that is often what people do. But interestingly, we don't know where. And so our hope was to generate data to know where people are so that, you know, organizations like perhaps airlines, perhaps, you know, AOPA advocacy organizations can target interventions to those regions to give quality advice. The issue, of course, being is that if people go to informal uh, like, you know, medical sources, they may not be able to consider that symptom in the air medical environment. So an example, of course, is like, you know, an upper respiratory tract infection causing disequilibrium in flight. Interesting. Uh, you came to the University of North Dakota, you told me, because it had an Air Force ROTC program and an aviation program, uh, but you're, you ended up moving towards uh, uh, I believe your degree ended up being in biology. Is that correct? Yes, tell, sir. Yeah. The story of how that happened. How, how did you go from aviation to then med school and now studying to be a neurologist? Yes, sir. Well, I'm tremendously grateful to UND because I feel like in many ways, the reason I get to do a job that I'm just so excited to do every day in, in large part is because of, you know, UND helping me along the way. Um, exactly. Me and a bunch of buddies went to UND to learn how to fly. Um, and somehow along the way, I enrolled in it was the pre-med biology class instead of the regular biology class or like the general studies. And then I liked it a lot. So then I was hemming and hawing and Dr. Jeff Carmichael, I think he's still there. He convinced me to take the second semester and I did. And then by the end of the year, I was convinced to make the switch, but still my heart was still in aviation. And I come from, you know, my family's in aviation. Um, but uh, I, I'm excited that I can kind of try to marry those interests with neuroscience and medicine and then keep connected to, you know, aviation. That's a, that's a great story. Uh, the other thing that uh, we laugh about here is, 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 you know, it's not enough that you're studying to be a neurologist and, and you're doing this important research, but you also uh, wrote a book uh, that's a lot of fun to read it, based on this topic of uh, your fictional pilot is someone who has an emergency in the air related to an undisclosed uh, medical issue, uh, which, which dovetails with, with your interest in your uh, in your research as well. Um, how did you find time to write a book during all of this, Billy? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, like any project, it's a lot of late nights. And I think my wife would tell you that she, you know, hates the book writing because it's, you know, a time away from already a kind of a busy schedule, but um, there's nothing like medical education to beat creativity out of someone. So it, it's, it's a wonderful, you know, outlet to have. So, and I, and I'm, I'm grateful that you share that. Uh, and it's always an honor when people take the time to read it. And your uh, any thoughts of, of writing more, or do you you still uh, sometimes put pen to paper? Well, actually, um, we have another one coming out this fall, <laughs> uh, entitled "Intrepid Pursuit." So, um, uh, and I can tell you a little bit about it if you want. I can give you yeah, the one liner. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it is borrowed characters from Wings of Deceit. There is this interesting phenomena, and in, in that has been described in. Um, passenger airliners called aerotoxic syndrome. A, a, one of the components of hydraulic fluid in uh, jet engines is a organophosphate, which is like a known toxin that's neurotoxin to humans. And there has been many years of hemming and hawing about whether or not this entity exists. So this book is about a UND professor uh, who goes undercover back into the airlines to discover the details of this 
underlying mystery and, and trying to uncover it for the future of aviation. Okay, interesting. People should know that that UND does play uh, is the two of the, the main characters from the book are are UND graduates in, in your first book as well. So uh, yes, sir. People I, are I will say, to see the name in print. They'll find it in <laughs> Wings of Deceit. <laughs> well, I will say that uh, a kind of a distant friend from UND was very kind in Red Wings of Deceit, but then she gave me feedback that there was nothing in the book about a UND hockey game. And she was very like, you know, that was very bothersome to her. So I, I really wanted to make it a point in Trepid Pursuit. There's a nice scene about a UND hockey game at the Ralph. Okay, something else to look forward to. Uh, Dr. Hoffman, thank you so much for being with us today on Beyond the Pages. Uh, it's just so wonderful to catch up with you and to hear how your research is going. It's obvious you're very passionate about it and, and, and really the good that can come out of it as well. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Milo. It's really a privilege. Thank you for watching Beyond the Pages. My co-host will appear in future monthly installments, UND alumni magazine editor extraordinaire Alyssa Connickson, and a writer whose storytelling skills are matched only by her sunny disposition, Jed Lipkins. The producer of Beyond the Pages is the hardest working event planner in all of Greater Grand Forks, Brooke Conlon. Beyond the Pages is a production of the UND Alumni Association and Foundation.